to The Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Tina Marie, and today I'm joined by Chef Patrick Fury of Nectar Restaurant in Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Thanks, thanks for having me. Nice to have you back, sir. Very excited about today. We are being treated today. We are. We, are. we have wonderful wines, uh, and we that's, have you know, hand in hand with food. A diverse selection of Rhone Valley wines from one of the most spectacular regions in southeastern France. So we'll be trying a plethora of different wines today and you mm -hmm. will actually be cooking with some of them as well. Yeah, we're going to do a couple of like um, not so traditional French uh, cuisine and also some very traditional French cuisine with both. Let's get started, okay. Chef. Well, we're going to start out with a little bit of something that, you know, this is a very good representation of uh, what, what I'm cooking at Nectar as well is like a little bit of like traditional and also uh, some Asian as well and, and very on an eclectic scale. So we have some beautiful have some prawns. Beautiful prawns head on. Um, I like I like the head ons, you got a little bit of that more juicy juiciness yes. to them. They don't get get as dry. So we're gonna do a little seaweed salad with some crispy prawns and we're gonna actually have a, a sea salt crusted as well. I'm using this mm. molten salt from, from England, which is a really nice uh, crystally fun crunchy. It has a nice texture crunchy. to it. Yep. Great. So we're gonna start out with um, we have a little bit of a soybean oil. I like to use soybean oil only because the lack of flavor to it, it doesn't really take anything away or give you know, to, to the dish itself, so it's gonna be just a clean flavors Perfect. with the chilies. So we have a little bit of uh, chilies, garlic, uh, molten sea salt, um, sesame. We're gonna start with a little bit of uh, potato starch. Um, and why do you use potato starch as opposed to maybe flour or? Um, as, as, as far as all the starches are concerned, especially you know, if you're gonna look, looking at corn starch and different mm -hmm. types of starch, it's, it's finer, okay. it has a lot, it has a tendency to have a lot more crispiness to it. So it's mm. it's it's the best to use if you want something really super crispy. So we're gonna Right actually, into the soybean oil. Yep. Soybean oil. Are you fully cooking them first in the we're, soybean oil or part? Just about. Okay. Just about cooking them, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always love your use of some Asian ingredients as you're you know want to do of course that oh, yeah. and yeah. you have some seaweed salad here for mm -hmm. us today that you're using. That's right, and that's going to be for this dish itself. So it's going to be um, nice, hot, crispy prawns, a uh, little bit of punch with mm -hmm. the chilies, um, nice kind of fun flavor in the end with the garlic, and then the sesame itself. The seaweed salad actually is marinated with sesame oil and sea and mm. sesame sesame themselves. So this will this will go really well with each other. Nice cool so, at yep. the end. So Very we're going to take a little bit more of the uh, soybean oil. And we're going to actually just transfer them in here, but we're first we're going to prep out the pan. Great. A little bit of chilies. Okay, mm -hmm. so our coating is actually going into the pan first. Is that correct? Yeah, it's actually, well, actually this is the flavor. This is the flavor. The flavor All yeah. right. Okay, and then we're going to take these out right in here. So that was garlic and some chilies, chili okay, some, pepper, some okay. serrano, some uh, jalapeno. Okay. Again, you can use Thai chilies depending on how. Okay, depending we're on how, probably how and, hot you want it. Right. Take our seaweed. So this essentially will finish off cooking yep. in this. It's just going to okay. finish out in those in that. So we're going to take a little seaweed on the plate. So we're going to plate these. Uh, now is, right this, is this a dish on the menu at Nectar? We do. We actually have uh, we have a seaweed salad in a couple of different ways. We have it with baby octopus. Uh, this is something that, and again, they kind of rotate out, and and I kind of try to not to have like too many of the same things, sure. but this is one of the dishes that I like to rotate out and put on, onto the menu itself. Great. So it's it's pretty popular. Um, it's one of those things that when it comes off of the menu, people are like, oh, where is we're it? Looking and for then, it. Yeah. And then when it's uh, what's on there, they have a lot of fun. So you right. take all of this good. I know. It's tasty, yeah. crusty, sort of flavorful nuggets there. Oh, yeah. And I like because it's very healthy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's simple. There's no carbohydrates in this at all. It's, it's greens and fish. These pea tops are, are really sweet. My all-time favorite, one of my favorite citrus is uh, Meyer lemons. Mm -hmm. They're very, very sweet. They're in season right now. Um, and that's another thing, you know, kind of just rolling with seasons and letting mm -hmm. the ingredients dictate take the menu. Exactly. So we're just gonna finish it. Meyer lemon. Beautiful. Okay, shall we taste? Yeah, please. Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. So let's taste this now with our special guests. We have joining us today Eileen Fabunin from Rhone Valley Wines. Hi, Kim Marie. Pleasure to have you here nice again. To see you. Nice to see you too. <laughs> Very French. <laughs> Right, and we have Hudson Austin from The Wine Merchant. Yes, how are you? Nice to have you here, sir. Come on and join me. Okay, so we have this 
wonderful dish that Patrick, yes, Chef Patrick delicious. Fury has made for us now. And we're going to do some pairings, yes. right? Uh, the Rhone region of France. Yes. Tell us a little about the region and what, what makes these wines so spectacular. Well, the Rhone Valley, most uh, simply put, is defined by the Rhone River. It's a river that is on a wild journey south, mm -hmm. and it originates from the Rhone Glacier mm -hmm. in uh, Switzerland and journeys through France all the way down to the Mediterranean Sea. So it's a beautiful and vast region. And what we're going to start off with is uh, a wine from the Southern Rhone, from the appellation of Costiel de Nîmes. Wonderful. And now, Hudson, tell us a little bit about this wine and why it goes so well with this dish. Well, this is just a fantastic dry rosé, and I think people make such a mistake in assuming that anything lovely and pink like this happens to be sweet. And here you have something that has all this wonderful delicacy, and it really accentuates the flavor of the food. And this Costiel de Nîmes is a beautiful pink. It's a deep pink, unlike a, a paler pink from other parts of uh, France or the world, and that's what really uh, differentiates the rosés from okay. the region. Cheers. 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 Mm. Mm, that's a perfect match. I love mm. how the saltiness mm -hmm. of the fish really matches well with the choice of wine. Really, really beautiful. Yeah, and beautiful mm -hmm. subtle aromatics of the wine as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do the Côte de Rhone village from the village of Plan de Dieu. And Patrick, you're going to start the next dish, I will. correct? Okay. Wonderful. When you think of the Rhone Valley, especially the Southern Rhone, think of Grenache-based blends. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a beautiful blend of Thank Grenache, you. Syrah, and Morved. And Syrah is, is not just Australian, as many people you were telling me before the show had to make that <laughs> It's so mistake. true. Pe people have thought so much of um, Shiraz, mm -hmm. and there would be no Shiraz if there weren't for the Rhone Valley. Cheers. Cheers. Patrick, we can't forget you. <laughs> Cheers. A little, a little break from your <laughs> cooking, right? This is really nice. It's not too heavy of a red, mm -hmm. so it, it goes perfectly with our lighter fish dish. Okay, our third wine, yes. a Ventoux. Mm -hmm. Does this have anything to do with the Mont Ventoux, that yes. spectacular mountain that we all see from the Tour de France? Yes, it does. It's a beautiful uh, region, and again, in the southern part of the southern Rhone. I mean, there's just such a richness in the aromatics of this mm. wine. Mm. This wine is, is richer than the Syrah, but again, not too heavy. Again, still light, but has a fuller, a little bit of a fuller flavor. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, the wines in this area tend to be known a little bit more for being big and expansive. Just like the mountain. Exactly. It's exactly. <laughs> a good way to remember it, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for these tastings. You're going to actually come back with three more beautiful wines. We are. Wonderful. We'll see you then. Okay, Chef, for our next dish, I understand we're going deep in the heart of southern France. Is that correct? We are. Um, this dish is a much more traditional dish uh, that, that you would find in, in those regions. And uh, we're going to actually use some of the Syrah, the Rhone wine, to marinate. And we're going to make some short ribs. Um, right. To be in the kind of the same... Uh, uh, you know, my thought is, is a lot of the wines in Rhone, there's a lot of uh, organic production and, and, mm -hmm. and fresh and, and good stuff. So we're going to use some uh, grass-fed, no antibiotics, no uh, hormones uh, from these uh, short ribs themselves, the cows. It's a good co-op coming, coming through New England down into Pennsylvania. So um, first we're going to do is we're going to, we have uh, some beautiful short ribs. And you can beautiful. see with, them, with the marbling in them. Excellent marbling. Yeah. Look at that. That's so what you want in a nice short rib. Exactly. So we're going to take the short rib themselves, and you're going to do the night before, is you're going to get them, and you're going to take take the short ribs. You're going to get some uh, what we call in France, or they would call it mirepoix, but mm -hmm. they're just going to be uh, carrots, or celery, the or the trinity. Yeah, there you go, the trinity. Right? That's right. Carrot, celery, and onion. Um, yep. Or I'm actually use shallot. shallots. I'm going to use shallots because uh, they're I like I like the flavor of them. Mm -hmm. Nice sweet <clears throat> flavor. Yep. Little little bit of uh, garlic. Mm -hmm. So we got some shallots, and then we have. Uh, our garlic in there. Wonderful. And then we're going to use thyme some and fresh thyme. yep. As well, I'm going to a great get it in marinade there. for our beef short ribs. Yep. Overnight marinade. Yep. Correct? Overnight. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And then you're going to take. We're going to take some syrah. Mm-hmm. Actually, just pour it straight over. Sort of like a play on on like a beef burgundy or kind of yeah, but, kind but of a little that, bit yeah. lighter with your yeah. own twist. Mm -hmm. So we got this. We're going to put this in our refrigerator overnight. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we're gonna pull it out, and then I've uh, started earlier uh, while you guys were tasting your your rosé and your light 
late runs, um, taking the mirror pot and separating them. So we kind of want to dissemble what we just did. Okay, so disassemble refrigerator. our marinade ingredients right, then. Right, right. Great. The beauty of this dish is actually, is this is your whole dish in your refrigerator. You bring it out, you don't need any other more ingredients. You're, you're going to make your dish from this. Dish. And there's no waste. There's no you're waste. You're not discarding you're anything. It. Yep, okay. you're utilizing everything. So we're going to separate them. We have our, our uh, thyme. thyme. We have our shallots, celery, carrots, garlic. And we've got a nice little pot here. And so and we always we understand, too, that it's always good to cook with wines that you would typically drink, correct? Yeah, I think they, they pair perfectly because I, th I think there's a lot of symmetry between, you know, using it in the, in the food itself and then actually having it with it. So they yeah. kind of sing together. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We now return to the Chef's Kitchen. To start out and what we're going to want to do is because we want this to be a nice kind of real nice brown rich dark sauce so um looking we're like gonna, that exactly so we want to get your pan real real hot mm -hmm. get your mirror pot in get that nice sizzle oh yeah that's just the wine kind of cooking off cooking off there okay then right. we're going to um, pull out our churros themselves okay season them out A little salt and pepper. Okay. Really Set maximizing flavor with this dish. Oh yeah. Everything has been marinated and then reused. Yep. And you can. What's nice is the, the flavor with the with the uh, with the fat and the the marbling of the short rib themselves and the wine um, really gives a, a beautiful meaty flavor. Yeah. This oh, is and a, it smells so good in this a, kitchen right this, now. This is definitely a, a, a good meaty dish. Yeah. I love I love short ribs. I, I love the fact that you can make it a day ahead of time. It's a wonderful entertaining dish. Right. Oh yeah. So we're gonna get these. Uh, get them nice and golden brown. We're going to use the wine Great. that we uh, had marinated, and also the thyme itself. So we're gonna want to get this nice and okay. And color in there. So we're we reusing the Rhone Valley wine that we, we used yep. to raw. Exactly. So we're going to get these a uh, little bit more caramelized that way. Okay. Um, simultaneously, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little ragu for the top of it, a little garnish. Oh, very so nice. So we're going to use some Cipollini onions, some hedgehogs, we're going to use some uh, smoked pork belly, bacon. I like to use slab. Um, there's actually, we do some smoking at the restaurant itself, so we make ours in the house. Um, so we're going to get that ragu going while this is searing. So we're going to take this. When I, when I do my pork belly at the, at the restaurant itself, I take off the skin. Okay. And I, think, I think that's important too. And you can see it's, it, you've removed a lot of the fat. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you cure it at and the cure restaurant. It. Yeah, cure it and then we smoke it. And I have a smoker on in house. You use it in, in, a, in a, a variety of dishes at the restaurant? Yeah, we have, we have a couple where I do a, a pork belly with a steam bun. And, okay. And, um, we, you know, and, I, and again, like, you know, I'll, I kind of start playing with it back and forth on, on different methods and not having two or three of the same thing, but yes. again, just kind of switching it up. Sure. You know, with, with the seasonal ingredients. So we got those going. We're going to have some uh, Cipollini onions themselves. You mentioned your pork belly steam buns. I know you were recently written up in the uh, newspaper about That's right. that dish. Yeah, yeah. So those are those are going really well. These are chipling onions, and yeah. how are these prepared prior to? These are just food? these are just actually cleaning them, and then I just just kind of saute them out, just like we're doing. Okay. This right now. Get some so nice color on them. Now. Get a nice color. Great. Just cook them out slowly until they get soft all the way through. Okay. So now, okay. I'm going to go back to our short ribs and turn them over. And the short ribs, we're just looking for some color on yeah. the outside. We want some nice color. We want to actually. You want to get enough nice color, and really what we're trying to do is to sear them all the way around to keep okay. all of those juices inside them. Great. And the taste of that seared yeah. exterior is, is really what we look for. Exactly. Really nice. Yeah, that, that caramelization. So we're going to let that go while we're doing this. We're going to take these, put them in here. We're going to turn that up. Okay. We have some nice hedgehogs here that are uh, Tell me about wild these mushrooms. mushrooms. These are actually wild mushrooms from the northwest of the United States. Okay. Um, they're a lot like a chanterelle. Okay. Kind of like, you know, I, I really think the flavor is just like them. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're not quite as meaty. They're a little bit more fine, mm -hmm. um, almost like a shiitake in a way. Sure. So they're they're really, they're, they're a beautiful mushroom. So really what we want to do with them is get a nice, good hot pan, um, saute them out quickly and kind of get a little caramelization on the outside and kind of leave their, their uh, their texture and beauty too. Great. So we got that going. Take some of these small ones, get them going. 
you have a very uh, very lively bar at your restaurant, and you're yeah. also you're also a, 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 into brewing. Yeah, uh, I um, you know I like I like beer. I like um, uh, so you know we worked with um, uh, Victory in the past, and and like to travel. We're going to be traveling to. Uh, um, Europe to Scotland to kind of see some cool. Trip coming up yeah. to Scotland. Yep, going to see um, a bunch of breweries and stories, and uh, it's going to be a fun educational trip. You know? And wonderful inspiration that you can bring back to the restaurant, mm -hmm. and uh, which we will enjoy your trip to Scotland <laughs> through your food. I have Definitely. no doubt. Yeah. So these are these are working well. A little Great. bit of uh, again, we're using some sea salt. Mm -hmm. I want to get a quick, uh, okay. actually, some of the, uh, Great. Over Excellent. So adding the chipotle mushrooms along with the, the pork belly. Mm-hmm. going to let those cook out. Chipotle mm -hmm. onions cook the rest of the way through. The pork belly giving some flavor that through That in itself can make a great lunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we got, um, so we got some caramelization here on these. We're going to take our, our red wine. Okay. And this is the same red wine that the beef had been marinating in? That's right, yeah. Okay. Um, this I is even our take, put together take a, phase. Yep. A little bit extra there. Put it in. Um, so we're utilizing, we're just utilizing the, what we used here in the okay. refrigerator. So this is going right out. We're going to take the wine. I like to reduce it only by half because we don't want to reduce it all the way. Gone. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We now return to the chef's kitchen. After we get it reduced down by half, we're going to add, I, I like to use chicken stock right on top. Okay. And just finish this out. So fill it up with chicken stock and you just, want to cover them just, fully or? Just till they're covered. Just, just till they're covered. covered. And you want to kind of keep an eye on them. They do take a little while. They, these, like this size will take about two hours to, okay. to cook. And then what you want them to do is to be fork tender. So we have uh, some of our short ribs that have been braised up And look how ahead incredibly of time. rich mm -hmm. this comes out. And this is velvet. Yeah. So I think we're just about ready to plate. This is good stuff. I think we have some parsley, right? Don't yes, we, we do. We have some Duro parsley. I always love using our Duro herbs because we get to reach right think, into the freezer. And when we're talking about you know these nice, um, beautiful, earthy, wonderful wines, I always think of parsley. I always think it's yes. one of my favorite herbs, and I think it just You'll find it throughout the region, um, all the way down the road, utilizing you know parsley through through the regions. So. And we take it for granted, parsley. Oh yeah. It appears on our plates too much as a side note, right? And as a garnish, right? But as so, a right, right so in here, chef. Here we're gonna take we're gonna take a couple in here. A couple in here. Yep. So one, two, another one. And then I'll one. take one. There you and go. And we're gonna actually look how easy those right popped out. This is why I love these. And we're gonna fold this right throughout our little ragu. Perfect. What I like like about these is like. Just putting them right at the end and yeah. kind of letting that just, just kind, kind of defrost, meld, melt in there. Meld into your dish. Mm -hmm. Add some more flavor. So then we have a lot of that, a lot of that juice from the mushrooms. Yes. Oh, it looks spectacular. I'm loving this this uh, pork belly with the short rib. A little unexpected. You, you always put something unexpected. Your own little flair. Okay, chef, so we're going to be tasting some more spectacular wines with Eileen and Hudson. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you. And let's have a taste of this fantastic short rib while Hudson opens a wonderful wine. This wine is from the Northern Rhone from the appellation of Crow's Elmitage. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful wine that uh, pairs perfectly with chef's dish. It's nice and full bodied, mm -hmm. it's 100% Syrah. And he also marinated it in Syrah, too, right. which is a good mm -hmm. continuation. And the Northern Rhone uh, mm. produces beautiful Syrahs. In fact, Syrah is the only red grape variety that's allowed to be planted under uh, AOC standards in the Northern Rhone. So we'll actually taste three different Syrahs from the Northern Rhone. Excellent. Next, we'll pour this first San Josef. And the San Josef is a neighboring appellation also in the Northern Rhone. And you can really taste subtle differences here, but Syrah really exhibits lots of dark red fruit flavors. Mm, and it smells very fruity too. Great it's so fruity explosive. aroma. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. That's beautiful. I love that. Real bright taste. Right, and deep and complex. Mm -hmm. There's something about this wine nice. that just sort really of sings nice. the passion. I like yeah. these two together a yeah. lot. 
We actually have a third wine that you're going to be pairing with this very earthy dish. We do. We do. It is another wine from the appellation of Saint Joseph, and Syrah again at its best. Uh, the Northern Rhone wines are some of the most revered wines in the valley, and the climate is quite different from the Southern Rhone. In the Southern nice. Rhone, thank you. We have the hot Mediterranean climate, and in the Northern Rhone, it's more continental. It varies. Mm. But the 2009 vintage was a beautiful year, and it shows, I think, in the glass. Excellent. So let's not delay and taste. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Beautiful, showcasing the tremendous diversity of this valley. Wonderful to have you here, all of you. Hudson and Eileen for your knowledge, and Patrick for your innovative take on all these Thank wonderful you. flavors and cuisines. It's wonderful being paired with the Rhone wines. Rhone Valley Wines. It's been a great day in the chef's kitchen. Thank you all. Thank you. Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of the Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. Flowers on the set provided by Nature's Gallery Florist. Distinctive floral arrangements with European flair. Experience the pleasure of Cote de Rhone wines. Imported from southeastern France, these wines offer diversity and value. Most of the production is red, but whites and rosés will delight your palate as well. Heralded for their fruity, spicy, food-friendly flavors, Cote de Rhone wines are a perfect match for your everyday meals or for any special occasion. You can always celebrate with Cote de Rhone wines. Highly and consistently rated by the press and pursued by wine lovers, Cote de Rhone wines are available at retailers, wine bars, and fine restaurants nationwide. I think the best thing about this kitchen um, is the way it's set up is that no matter what kind of food I'm going to cook, whether it's Asian, whether it's European, it's, it's prepared for that. And so if I'm going to come over here and do a wok dish, I'm able to do that. If I'm going to come over here and braise some beef, it's, it's ready to go. The diversity of it and the quality of the equipment is, is, is outstanding.